This is the Pavo 20 Pro, and it has been updated for the DJI 04 Air Unit Pro. The Pavo 20 Pro is super small and lightweight. It's easy to throw in a bag and take with you on a trip, but with 2.2 inch props and a 3S power system, it is a capable little ripper. With the recommended 550 milliamp 3S battery, it weighs just 155 grams. So if you need to be sub 250 to avoid drone registration rules, this is gonna be a good choice. What's nice about this lightweight design is that you get relatively long flight times and it doesn't make much noise, which means you can fly in public places or around people without causing too much of a scandal every time you fly. Here's what it sounds like. If you're new to FPV, the Pavo 20 Pro is a great drone to get started with because it's easy to fly, and with these prop guards, it will take a beating, and it's pretty cheap at just $105. And if you've already got a Pavo 20 Pro, you can just update it to DJI 04 with this camera bracket. Because aside from the redesigned camera mounting system, this drone is basically the same. There are a few small differences that we'll talk about in just a second. The camera mounting system has been improved on every generation of the Pavo drones and this new camera bracket for the DJI 04 Pro is much better and much more reinforced. Here's the camera bracket for the Pavo Pico. This one is for the Pavo 20, this one's for the Pavo 20 Pro, and this one's for the new Pavo 20 Pro for DJI 04. This new camera cage offers a lot more protection for your DJI 04 Pro camera, and I didn't see the camera protection or the ducks in my footage even when I flew slow with very little camera tilt. Compared to the older version, there is a lot more protection for the air unit and the antenna mounts are much stronger. I did break the antenna mounts on my original Pavo 20 Pro in a crash. With the original Pavo 20 Pro, you got some of these whip antennas for your digital VTX, which had the advantage of being much more durable and crash resistant, although the range probably wasn't as good as the full-size DJI antennas. These lightweight whip antennas are not included in the new version of the Pavo 20 Pro, so you have to run the full-size DJI antennas, but most people would prefer that anyway to get that better video reception. Just like the original Pavo 20 Pro, the camera bracket is soft mounted on four rubber grommets and it uses step screws to prevent you from over tightening them. Without a soft mounting solution like this, the DJI 04 would have jello and the camera wouldn't be able to record clean gyro data, which means stabilization wouldn't work. This soft mount does work very well as you'll see in the test footage throughout this video. A real advantage of this camera mounting system is that I can use one DJI 04 system with several different Pavo 20 Pros just by removing those four screws and plugging in the air unit. The recommended batteries are these Lava 3S 550 milliamp high voltage batteries and that's what I'm flying on mine and it has tons of power. For my flight test, I took the Pavo 20 Pro out to a local park and flying in public places like this is where this drone really shines. This is a crowded city park and there are guards and caretakers, but I've never been kicked out for flying my Pavo 20 Pro. I would get the boot pretty fast if I showed up with a five inch drone. While I was out flying, there was a religious procession passing by. I landed my drone to let them pass by in peace, but the priest came up to me and was super into my drone and asked me to get some shots of them, so I did. Since the Pavo 20 Pro is under 250 grams, and since they did request that I film them, and by doing so became participants, this flight was in compliance with the drone rules where I live. On the recommended 550 milliamp 3S batteries, my flight times were between five and six minutes with the mix style flying that I like to do. You will get less flight time if you're ripping around, or you'll get a little bit more if you're just cruising or flying indoors. If you want, you could go with a slightly larger 650 milliamp 3S battery to get a little extra flight time, but I think 550 milliamp is really the sweet spot when it comes to performance versus flight time. The best part about this drone is that DJI 04 Pro. You can't beat the range and penetration of this state-of-the-art DJI system. And the image quality is basically unmatched by anything other than a GoPro 13 or a DJI Osmo Action 5. And that's a whole nother level of cost and complexity. Most of the footage I'm showing you has been stabilized because it's just nicer to watch. Here's some raw DVR footage so you can judge how the Pavo 20 Pro flies. 
There was some wind on the day I did these test flights, and since the Pavo 20 Pro is so lightweight, it does get blown around a lot in windy conditions. Rocksteady and Gyroflow do work very well thanks to that soft camera mount, which allows the DJI 04 Pro camera to record clean gyro data. The Pavo 20 Pro has some real potential as a cinematic FPV drone, even though it's tiny and super lightweight. If you want your footage to look its best, I recommend using Gyroflow to get the best results. To get the shots you're seeing, I'm using ND filters to control my shutter speed. I really like these Freewheel ND filters because they're very easy to put on and take off, unlike some other ND filters I've tried. And they are super narrow, so they will fit inside the camera cage of just about any FPV drone running the DJI 04. But I have to point out that it looks like Freewheel just updated the design of their filters and their new ones look a little bit wider. And I can't say for certain whether or not they'll fit the Pavo 20 Pro because mine came from the original batch. Beta FPV does have ND filters that'll fit the Pavo 20 Pro. I'll link to them in the video description below. There are a few very small differences with the new version of the Pavo 20 Pro. It only comes with ELRS. This is the original Pavo 20 Pro, and the reason I have this blue antenna is that I ordered this one with Crossfire pre-installed. Over here, this is the Pavo 20 Pro Nightfire. If you're wondering why it's a different color, it's because this was a special edition that came with an LED strip that has addressable LEDs. It's a very cool effect, and I hope they offer this again in the future. Also, the DJI plug is longer to accommodate the 04 air unit. On the original Pavo 20 Pro, it was shorter because the plug on the 03 air unit was closer to the board. If you're upgrading, you can just use the cable that comes with your DJI 04. I also noticed that the packaging is a little bit different with the new Pavo 20 Pro. The box is bigger and the foam inside looks like it was designed to ship the Pavo 20 Pro with the DJI 04 pre-installed because it has cutouts for antennas. This might be because they intend on selling the Pavo 20 Pro as a bind and fly with the DJI 04 pre-installed. Other than those small differences, everything else is basically the same. The motors are 1104 7200 kV lava branded motors. The props are Gemfan 2218 three bladed props. And I think this is a great prop choice if you're comparing the Pavo 20 Pro to other two inch DJI 04 drones like the Flywoo Flylens 85. These slightly larger 2.2 inch props give the Pavo 20 Pro an edge and help it fly well with the weight of a digital VTX. The all-in-one board is Beta FPV's F4 2-3S board with 20 amp ESCs running BlueJay firmware. It does have a 9 volt 2 amp BEC to power your digital VTX, which means that the DJI 04 Pro system won't brown out even if you fly your battery down lower than you should. You do need to use this USB-C dongle to plug into Betaflight, but fortunately the plug is pretty easy to access because of the way the all-in-one board is shaped. These prop guards are a little bit taller and much stronger than smaller Pavo drones like the Pavo 20 and the Pavo Femto, which means these ducts do add a little bit of efficiency to give you longer flights and they are more crash resistant. You do get an LED light strip, which is pre-configured in beta flight, so you can just assign a switch on your radio and turn it off and on like this. Installing the DJI 04 Pro is pretty straightforward. Beta FPV has a video on their channel that walks you through the process. I'll link to it in the video description below. You do wanna be a little careful routing your cables. I put a few loops in my DJI camera cable so that there's no danger of it falling into the props. I also looped my antenna wires to avoid any bending or creasing that could damage them and reduce video reception. For my LED strip, I routed the plug out the side because that's how it reached the best. Then I used a little fabric wire harness tape to secure the plug so it doesn't fall into the props. And then a little more to hold down the ends of the strip so they don't come loose. If you're a new FPV pilot, or if you plan to fly indoors, you might want to consider using a motor output limit in beta flight, or even using 2S batteries. On 2S, the Pavo 20 Pro will fly fine, but it'll have one third less voltage, which means the throttle will feel a little soft and it'll be easier to control. But unless you already have a bunch of 2S batteries you wanna use, 
I think it would be much better to set a motor output limit or a throttle limit because then you have the option to dial it back as your skills improve without having to buy new batteries. There's two ways to do that. The easiest way is to set a throttle limit right from your radio. You can access the menu through your goggles with your drone powered up, but not armed obviously. Just move your left stick to the left and your right stick up, then select profile, then rate, and then under throttle limit, you can set whatever value you want. To set a motor output limit, connect your quad to Betaflight. Then under the PID tab, go to motor output limit and set it to the value you feel comfortable with. You can also set a throttle limit under scale if you prefer to do it in the software. If you're learning, I would suggest a value between 70 to 80% and then you can slowly raise it up as you feel more comfortable. All right, you guys, now it's time for my conclusions. The Pavo 20 Pro was one of the most popular all-purpose micro drones for the DJI 03, and it's only gotten better with this DJI 04 Pro update. With the DJI 04 Pro, this drone is lightweight, it's efficient, and it flies great. It would be a great first FPV drone because it's super durable with this prop protection, and it is pretty inexpensive. It's just $105. That doesn't include the DJI 04 Pro system, of course. An extra canopy is $4, extra ducts are $4, a complete frame kit is $12, and the ND filters are $6. So the Pavo 20 Pro is pretty unbeatable for the money. The real selling point of this drone is that it's been designed around the DJI 04 Pro. These 2.2 inch props are just big enough to handle the 04 Pro system, yet small enough so that the drone is unobtrusive and easy to take with you. The fact that we can get this kind of image quality in a drone that's so small, lightweight, and inexpensive is a real game changer. If you decide that the Pavo 20 Pro is for you, please check out the links in the video description below. They do support my channel and that allows me to keep making videos like this. All right, you guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.